So let's have a look at the dynamic events now. I'm going to zoom out. Um, there's our file. A bit more. And um, and let's delete all of these here. Take our first lick and go to the end. And maybe set our loop up so the loop plays all the way up to bar 9. I press F12 to bring up the transport bar. And type in um, bar 9. This one is the volume curve. It says volume. And I can change the volume curve by using my pencil. And change the volume of the segment like this. If I click out as well, I can create um, gradual increases and decreases in, in volume height, basically. Which I can then move around suit the actual material. that the volume would stay on the level on the on this one. It's getting quieter. And if I delete this one, it's back to the original volume again. The next curve you can play around with is the hand curve. Pencil again. But here we're creating left and right elements. Next one on this list are the um, marker points. Endpoints. Endpoints are basically just endpoints, really, which contain information of of when and of velocity as well. So I've increased the view to incorporate my my eight bar loop, and um, and let's play the part again. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to fit in where all the different links are. Okay, so I'll pick up my pencil. And there, for example, was a new little lick, so I press Alt, and I click into this area and I've created a marker point. So I'll play through the song and I do the same trick all over the, um, the part, and every time I, f I hear something that I find is um, sort of different, or which stands on its own, I'll create a marker point. So one at the beginning, there, maybe there, 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 and the sort of slide. This one here, for example, I thought it would have put over there. So you can move the marker points around with your pencil. You can just pick them up, and you can also change the velocity information, which is a marker point as well. But let's disregard the velocity information for the time being. So what are marker points used for? Well. Marker points tell Cubase of, um, of where something of interest is happening in an audio file. Cubase as such hasn't got any ears, so it can't really listen to what you're playing. So in order, to, in order for Cubase to know where something is happening, you need to tell Cubase um, with the marker, f marker points where things are happening. Um, as opposed to MIDI information, where with MIDI information you've got node on and node off, information, Cubase knows that when you hit the keys and when you play the chord and things like that. But with audio material, Cubase just doesn't know when you when you sort of play a chord or when you um, create noise or do other things. Um, for Cubase, all these bits here are just, just noise and don't mean nothing. So you need to tell Cubase where things are, 
what things make sense, what things do you want to, to stand out, where do certain phrases start, for example, and that's what you use marker points for. Cubase has got an algorithm to to have a go itself of trying to analyze certain audio material, um, but at the end of the day you still have to check what Cubase found and make sure that that um, that it found the right bits. So let's let's have a look at the marker points here and let's do one of the typical uses of marker points. We'll select this part here, we'll go into the do menu and go for snip at marker points. So now Cubase cut everywhere where we had a marker point, it cut the the, the main audio recording, the main segment into lots of smaller segments. And then and now we can just play it back, it will sound the same. So now we've got lots of little segments, which all of their start and end inserts and their own key point. But deselect them all. And select this part here, you can see that the key point is at 0 16th note and 0 ticks. Which is the same for all the other parts, 0 0. Now the only real musical thing I can do now is I could um, mute certain parts. Um, let's go back to the beginning again. And here you can hear a nice cut, so I can switch on the reverb again. Back to the beginning again. Yeah, that cut's still very, very prominent then. But this cut was okay, that one was okay as well. But the real beauty in working with marker points is this one. I'm going to create a new part where I just clap along to the music. So I'll create a new track here, audio track. Let's call it Claps. Channel 4 is fine for now. We don't need the mix channel, it just came up on its own. We need the click as a count in. And um, let's select the input. Sorry. We need input one left. This should be me. That's the clap. The levels are fine. That's OK. And um, let's go with it. Two, three, four. <laughs> Some of them were quieter, others were in front of the beat, others were just after the beat. I mean, it doesn't look too bad considering that I've just clapped them live, but they're not dead on, so to speak. And that very first bit here is missing, but never mind. Now I select this part again, and I'm going to get Cubase to create some marker points. And this is done by going into the Get Marker Points section, Get Endpoints. And you've got a few different values here. Sensitivity, attack, maximum number of events per second. You can tweak those, play around with them if you need to, if, you, if Cubase can't find certain areas, for example. But for the time being, I'll leave them as they are. And just click on Process. And as you can see, every clap has received a marker point apart from the beginning one. Let's zoom out a little bit to double check. See, every clap has got its marker point. Um, and now I'm going to do this one. I'll select the part again, go into Do, and select Snippet Endpoints. But before I'll do this, I'll play this part on its own with a click. Let's switch on the metronome so we've got it on the playback as well. Timing is completely all over the place that down there. If we zoom into it, 
let's follow the song. Delayed, well delayed. That one's on the B, but this one is too early. Okay. Yeah, good. I did this on purpose, by the way. I'm not that bad. And um, let's go to the Do menu. Go for Snippet Endpoints. Now Cubase cuts all those parts um, according to where the endpoints were. And every segment has got its own cue point. And now what we can do is we've played the nodes on the beat, so we can quantize the whole section to um, to quarter nodes just by pressing the Q key. And you can see some of the segments have moved. And if I zoom into it, into it again, you can see that all the nodes now are exactly on the beat.